Hi friends, so after several days of just harvesting tons and tons of mint, nasturtiums, grass, just weed grass, uh, fennel, and brassica greens. I've just been throwing it in there and if they eat, they eat and if they don't, they don't, don't but they get some medicinal properties from the nasturtiums, the mint, stuff like that, fennel and they do peck at it, believe it or not. So I just collect it from all over the yard. I have things growing all over, various things and I just give them tidbits of everything so that the plants can renew themselves, regenerate. At the same time, the birds get some food. And if any, if not, they get to step on something cool and moist as opposed to just dirt. So, um, they do strip down the leaves and stuff like that and kick it around, that's for sure. So, it can't spread weed seeds like grass seeds. So... Um, so since I was doing that, I decided to collect some mint, and so if you look, they're kind of cut, and they'll just grow back, uh, but that gives room for my calendulas to grow, more light, and uh, what I'm going to do is wash the mint and freeze dry it. Here's some more mint that's away from the chicken run. I had taken a cutting from here and transplanted over there because I want it to be minty near the chickens and to have flowers over there. So that's what I'm doing. My black nebula carrots are going to seed. I kept a few in the ground and I'm glad I did because now I can collect seeds. I only have like four or five seeds in the packet. And over here is all that fennel. And over there is all the nasturtium. So believe you me, I have a lot of stuff. Over there are all my brassica greens and other things. My sunflowers getting taller and taller every day. And over here I have more nasturtiums. As you can see from my last video, I'm gonna try to grow it up in this thing. So I've got this um, rose jewel nasturtium and then the cherry rose dwarf so they're both cherry rose but for some reason this one seems a little more pale than that one that one's a lot deeper but anyway um being that it's dwarf i don't know how tall it's gonna get so i've already harvested a lot of mint let alone the ones that I already gave to the chickens. So this is quite a bit. I'm gonna wash it and make sure there's no bugs in there. And then I'm gonna strip all the leaves off the stems. And then we're gonna freeze dry that along with some chervil, some parsley and some cilantro. And I'll just put them in their individual trays to freeze dry and then in individual jars for spices. Hi friends, so here I've cut my chervil. Chervil's a herb that is um, kind of like cilantro and parsley, more like parsley I would say. And then here's my uh, tetra dill and my cilantro. So I'm going to wash them all and then I'm going to freeze dry them so that I can powder them and use them as herbs. Hi friends, I am really, really loving this calendula. Look at that beautiful peachy, pinky color. This one is the zeolites. It's so pretty. And it has so many petals, it's gorgeous. In this space I have tons of California golden poppies and some bachelor buttons, cone flowers. Um, I was going to transplant, pull out some of these plants and put them in a pot to give out. But I think I waited too long and they're too tall. They're now three to four feet tall. 
and they're blooming so I might as well just enjoy the blooms rather than pulling it out and transplanting it um, and then with the poppies they are a little shorter but they each plant can get quite bulky so I transplanted it out four of these poppies into uh, little pots and stuff which I'm gonna give to some family and friends um, we're gonna see them this weekend so they can have some and um, my other family members already got some of the plants when they were a little bit smaller so it works out I have too many and in fact probably there are only a few plants in here but they bulge out so much um, so in fact they fell over the cornflowers fell over and covered my dianthus which I managed to save today so the key is to have variety so since if I have too many of something I'll I will gladly pull out some of it and share it with somebody else so that's what I I'm doing so right here this is growing so fast you guys this is the bee balm the hyssop and it is growing so fast I mean um, just a few weeks ago they were just an inch like they were just above the ground they have like a light purple tinge to them and then they grew and I s looked at these I kid you not on Monday or or last week and they were like half this so I can cut all of these down to the ground, wash them, dry them, use them as tea, and let them grow back up. And then the bees can have at the, the blooms later in the season. So um, I found out you can use these leaves as in a salad or use them as tea, tea leaves. And I think I will try it. Mm, it does have a nice scent to it. So that was my hyssop, my bee balm. But look over here, I have my pineapple sage. And it is growing like crazy. So much. It's like leafing out and getting really bushy. Everything's green over here. Like, look. It's just, everything's filling out. And today when I was inspecting my flowers, I saw like three ladybugs on my cone flowers. So I'm sure there were many more and I've seen them on my fennel. So they're just going around eating bugs and I love it. I just love having ladybugs all around. It's been getting pretty hot really quickly. It would go from the 60s to the 80s. So it's been getting pretty hot. And then um, we're going to be due for rain on Saturday and possibly Sunday. But not as heavy as what we were getting. But I don't know if we're going to get that cold spell that we got the last time it rained. That it just sprinkled, but it got really cold at night. So, oh, those flowers have turned into little donut peaches. Not too many of them. It dropped a lot of flowers. Maybe it needed more water. I'm not sure. Oh, there they are. A bunch. And then here's my lavender. I'm going to move this pot to the front yard because I have some lavender up there as well. Or I might keep them back here since I don't have a set back here. I don't know yet. There's my beautiful Gerber daisy. I transplanted it from the pot and it's getting nutrients and it's growing. Here's the other one. There are my Shasta daisies and I'm not sure what the other one is. The other plant. And then here's my mum, my chrysanthemum. It's yellow. I just go around plucking weeds out of the ground, tossing them to the chicken, into the chicken coop. If they eat it, they eat it. If they don't eat it, then they'll just kick it around and it'll die. 
and I will also pluck some brassicas that I grow for them so they can have that they love brassicas and I'll give them fennel leaves and all, all sorts of greens mint just so that their innards will be healthy and hopefully it kills any type of things or deter things from their from their space my first sunflowers bloomed this one's like an octopus it's spread out fell over leaning all over the place with several branches but that's okay when it starts to die I will pull it out and then grow something down there or I can start growing something down there now but I haven't decided yet so let me start by transplanting that sage the seeds of cha change sage into my front garden bed and then I've got to sow more seeds transplant a bunch of things mostly transplanting sowing seeds those are my main tasks for now so let me show you my friends as you can see this was where my clay pots of plants were my um, agastache, some herbs, all kinds of stuff and they were all here starting to grow things but I, my plan was to grow something in this fire ring so uh, I'm gonna pull up this cardboard I mean this newspaper and let me show you oh that soil is so much nicer now um, I was trying to keep things from sprouting in here and also let the soil get further along and um, getting decomposed so because there were lots of mulch pieces and large pieces looks like it's doing great I'm going to try to grow something in there some marigolds some alliums chives bunching onions carrots celery and maybe some radishes or something so in the enclosure around the periphery is where I put all those pots because I was find, trying to figure out where to put them that's kind of above the ground so slugs and stuff won't get to them, the underside of them, but I have no clue where to put them and I was trying to set up something but it didn't do, it didn't go quite as well as I would like so I decided to place them here for now until they start to sprout and get tall enough and I can transplant the plants into other containers. Okay, so now I've pulled up the newspaper. It was the thick layer of it. And I'm dividing this fire ring into quarters. So each quarter is going to have different plants in it. Like I said, celery, carrots, alliums, and something climbing at the edge over there to go up my trellis and then over here I may do radishes I haven't decided yet so we'll see maybe I'll do carrots again because I really want a lot of carrots so we'll see so what I'm gonna use to divide it is some marigold the cracker jack or whatever you call it the really big ones let me show you so I'm going to sew this Cracker Jack mixed colors the pom-pom large ones to um, make the division of the parts for the for the plants to grow hi friends so I only sewed the Utah tall celery right there and then in that quadrant I have the touchstone gold beets. Uh, I tried growing it earlier this season however it got kind of covered in fennel so I'm gonna try again here and then over here I am growing the alliums of different varieties white Lisbon bunching, Cabernet onion and some Zaboon shallots and then over here I'm growing the carrots I decided instead of several different kinds of carrots, I was just going to grow the tender sweet because those are the oldest seeds I have and we'll see if anything comes up from that. If not, no big deal. Uh, I spot a couple slugs so I'm going to 
scoop them up with my shovel and throw them in the chicken run. So hopefully this will grow. I'm just keeping the uh, soil moist for the carrots by covering it with the newspaper. So in the fire ring, I to separate the fire ring into quarters to grow things in each quarter, I sewed in the middle the marigold French dwarf double mix colors. So it's going to be nice and fluffy, colorful, yet ward off pests and hopefully bring about pollinators. And then um, I sewed some celery in one quarter of the uh the bed the fire ring and this is a tall utah improved and then in one of the quarters i grew some um white lisbon bunching onion some onion bulb cabernet and some zebrun shallots then in a different quarter of that fire ring, I grew carrot tender sweet. Wow, this lupine is so gorgeous. And then against the backdrop of the California poppies, as well as the coneflowers or bachelor's buttons. Really, really pretty. And some snap peas growing here. I'm waiting for these. I'm hoping these are the polka dot flowers because they have a pink center so these are the purple and white colored lupins and here are the white lupins so pretty I love how gorgeous poppies are but I don't like how sensitive they are as soon as you pull the plant out of the ground they just start to just wither and flop over and if you want to make a an arrangement out of the flowers you can't because the petals fall off so they're just too fragile they're meant to be left in place I guess so over here I transplanted my loofah that I started back in like January or something like that so now I'm just labeling it and I'm going to grow a ton of this up my trellis as well as other things so I'm growing that loofah up this trellis that I've had for years and I'm also growing I transplanted this big top bitter melon and I'm hoping that it will grow because the problem is it's being shaded out by my goji plant and this is next to my trellis as well I've been so busy that I haven't been taking a look at all the beautiful blooms that are coming to look at this beautiful hibiscus it's like a mauvey pink color. Oop, I just tore that petal. Oh. See, that's gorgeous. Beautiful. So, my pomegranate is flushing out with beautiful, very shiny leaves and all kinds of red petals. So pretty. And my chili pepper is awesome it's already making fruit so i'm gonna start plucking because last year either the birds or some critter got to all the peppers before i could so this is ready to go look at all my beautiful roses i got one there one over there i've got cute little dianthus um um maria Oh gosh, this weed. Where did it come from? Oh my goodness, I've been passing by it, not noticing, but it grew so fast. And this is the kind um, that has thorns, so you got to be careful. So i got to get my gloves to pluck this one out. I can't use my hand, um, just bare hands. There's my geranium. I guess you can't really be fearful of cutting down stuff, so I didn't want to cut my bay laurel because it takes a long time to grow and right there where I cut it oops right there where I cut it it grew two more branches so it, it'll do fine the blackberries are waking up and spreading 
but I never get to the fruit before the birds do, I think. Look at that. This is a thornless variety, so I don't mind it going haywire over here. I already got rid of the thorny ones. Couldn't stand them in my garden. This nasturtium is growing out of control, so I'm going to have to get in there and pull some of it out because it's blocking, shading out some of my plants, like my strawberries down there. And it's climbing up my lychee, which I love very much, so I'm going to have to do something about that. I've got a calla lily that looks so pretty right now because it's in the shade. A rose that's coming up. The nasturtiums are growing through and into my pineapple guava, so I gotta get those before they seed everywhere. And the first bloom of my pineapple guava. And here are all the buds to the flowers all over. So it's waking up. See all the buds on my pineapple guava, my feijoa, my apple tree. Five in one apple tree. My pineapple, my society garlic, and my mums are doing great along with the fennel. My apple tree is blooming already, my five in one. My donut peaches are coming along, fruiting. This is one of the first ones to fruit, so that's something I can keep in mind and note. My pineapple sage, which I cut back earlier this year, um, to to because all the branches look dead, and now it's coming back so well, so prolific, and it smells so good. And the leaves are are so soft, so mm, so well scented, like pineapple. More fennel. I just grow everything kind of all mixed up, so it's going to be confusing for insects to come about here to do anything to my plants hopefully more donut peaches this thing is just so prolific this year um this is the bee balm so it's growing like crazy more donut peaches over there coming around the other side of my uh, five-in-one apple my persimmon these leaves are so pretty it's still a seedling yet here's a nice rose ready to bloom I wonder what color it is another rose a lavender uh, some more I believe this is Budlia. Oh, here. This is just a bunch of weeds. I gotta throw it in the chicken coop, chicken run, let them eat everything out of there. Just dig it around. Here is a beautiful rose. One of the ones I wanted to show today. Some Shasta daisies. My mom that's going to bloom in the fall. And citronella plant. And then here are the Miss Little Missy um, lilies. I've got one, two, three. There should be one down here, but I'm not sure what's wrong with it. Four, five. So, can't wait till they bloom. They'll look gorgeous. Oh, this one's getting shaded out and covered up. This is my Gerbera daisy. I gotta move some of this stuff. So that my plants don't get shaded out. That's something, I'm not really sure. Probably a different, oh yes, I think it's the other lily I bought. And here is another Gerbera daisy. I have to get in here and clean this up, make room for the plants. Oh, 
If you ever see this at the bottom of your trees, your fruit trees, pull them out because these suckers will take over. I threw some cilantro seeds in at the base of this century Asian pear uh, bear root that I planted earlier this year and it's coming too and it's good because it's shady over here so um, cilantro likes cooler weather so it'll do fantastic so I have this beautiful nasturtium with this cherry rose color cherry rose jewel nasturtium side by side with this beautiful other nasturtium that has a peachy color so beautiful I love it and it's gonna grow up this side of my enclosure my garden my protege garden and the reason being is that um, it'll provide shade as it grows up and bring the pollinators the reason why I have it here along with my board is because it's a narrow path and um, Last year I tried to grow melons up here and beans and it didn't do too well. It didn't get enough sunlight as, as well as I tried to grow some cucumbers on this side. So I'm just not going to grow my edibles here, um, my vegetables and stuff. I'll just grow it else, elsewhere. And so here, uh, let me show you something if I can get it to stand. Hold on one second. First, let me pan over to these cute little roses. Oh my goodness. <gasps> Finally, this rose is making flowers. It's been a while. These are smaller roses, but they're like a deeper pink. And then here's my beautiful pink one. And this is starting to wake up. There's some big ones up there. Right there, it's huge bigger than the palm of my hands and some other ones there I do have to cut this down and kind of clean it up several sunflowers ready to bloom here's a big one here and I just seed everything every now and then because I want to get everything going um, give some plants some shade by the time this spring comes around it gets hot really quickly so if you grow some of your tall things then you give you give some shade to your other plants so they have a, a easier time to grow your little seedlings so they don't dry out so quick and you bring in pollinators and other things so last fall I tried to film this but I didn't get a chance to but basically this is a little stand and you hook up your hose to it and I believe this is copper. I'm not I'm not too sure on my metals, guys. I'm not one of those crazy people that obsess over things. <clears throat> but I saw this and I thought, how cute. And I just thought it was a whirly gig or a, de a garden decor. But I had no idea until my husband explained, oh, that's a hose hookup. So you hook up, you stick this in the ground you hook up the hose to it and they have different things so this one is a little beetle or a ladybug and it has these cute little blue marbles in there and it's this lovely rose gold slash copper I'm not really sure my metals and it was supposed to be $60 but I got it on clearance I'm forgetting now um, but if I did videotape it um, in the fall in one of my videos with a uh, Lowe's haul and this I got from Lowe's um, it was I believe something like eight bucks or something like that or 14 bucks something like that but is well worth it I mean I saved so much from a full price of sixty dollars so the good thing about this and they had all kinds of um, creatures so they had butterflies they had this ladybug they had a frog so I only got two I was gonna get more but so what happens is this thing spins in circles and you hook up the the um, 
bottom to the ground and so you can move it around anywhere from place to place so you can move it anywhere from place to place and you can also link them so you can link like four or five or all over your garden and it'll just spin around and and um, water your garden and it sits about a little above my waist and I'm a little over five feet so it's taller than the other sprinkler that I have but let me show you the other one I have that's So you can link these, if you buy like five, you can link the five together and you can move them from place to place and um, water different things quickly. And that's part of my project today. I am linking, not linking, but I'm only using one today and I move because I don't have the shorter um, hose to link between the two. Uh, I only bought two of them, but you can link it this to another hose to another hose and so you can move it around and link it so it's quite versatile and it spins and it looks so pretty so gorgeous so let me show you what I'm doing so I am moving it around and I'm letting it spray everything because I'm going to apply because it's an overcast day today I'm going to apply um, beneficial nematodes into the ground and the instruction says to wet the soil very well then apply the uh, beneficial nematodes by spraying it and then after that follow it with some more water and you got to keep the ground moist for um, two weeks to help the beneficial nematodes travel and thrive and the reason why I'm doing that is because I have an issue with the, um, what do you call those? The leaf miners. It's been a problem for several years and recently I brought, it was my fault, I brought in some uh, vegetation that might have been infected with rust. So my hollyhocks have been rusting and I've had to throw away a few plants already. But um, other than that, I'm hoping that the beneficial nematodes will help me with a lot of the problems. I bought three varieties of beneficial nematodes, the three that are suggested that helped. So each, each type of beneficial nematode helps to um, get rid of like several different kind of pests. So the trio of them gets rid of the majority of pests. It costs a little bit of money, but I think it's worth it to um, not have the headache of dealing with uh, pests, you know, because you work so hard to grow things, you don't know what the weather's going to be like, and you've got animals that are eating your plants and all kinds of issues, you want, like, at least something to help you out in the garden. And look at how beautiful that is. So that one is a, uh, a dragonfly, and it's gorgeous. And I'm just going to water everything, then I'm going to apply the beneficial nematodes. And I think that'll be my work for today. Yesterday I transplanted a bunch of um, plants. Yesterday I transplanted a bunch of seedlings. 
into a garden bed. So I've been busy doing different things. Um, let me see. So you saw my video on uh, how I had these herbs in the clay pots. So I had to move them from atop my fire ring and set them somewhere. And I was trying to build a little structure to put to plant them in and um, to place them on top of, but um, it didn't fit as planned. So this is what I'm doing. I'm just setting them here until they grow taller and then I might transplant them out of the pots because some of these things are gonna be tall, like agastache, and I want to gather the leaves from that to make tea. There are a lot of benefits to agastache, as well as they draw in um, pollinators, as well as I also have herbs here. So I have like um, mint, Greek mint. I've got lime and lemon basil, all kinds of cool stuff. So spicy bush um, basil. Um, so I've just been trying to grow a lot of things, um, transplanting things, so direct sowing seeds. Uh, my bean, I don't know if I grew the Gita beans too early and it was too cold, but hardly anything grew here. You'll see a plant here and there. There's one, there's a couple. There's another one. I have a few Gita beans, but they didn't grow prolifically like my um, yard long beans that I grew last year up this trellis. And I don't know if it's because I sowed the seeds too early or I soaked the seeds too long or whatnot, but now they're starting to come up but very sparse and few in between. And if they don't do well, I'll just stick in more seeds, uh, but of the yard long beans or the oriental beans so we'll see um you just want to have a variety of things growing and producing all summer long this year hi friends i have several different varieties of chili peppers here i transplanted out some um, sweet peppers to a different bed and it's time to transplant these out and separate them out. There are some pots that have four and five and six and three plants and a few things didn't come up or they died off because we had a really wet winter. Um, so I'm just going to pot them up into separate pots and have several varieties all over and share with family friends and family. Um, so these that are left over in here are the spicy hot ones or the mild hot. But regardless, they have some heat. So I'm going to plant them in the backyard. The ones in the front are going to be sweet peppers. You don't want to grow them too close together or else they'll start, um, you'll start having, you know, banana peppers that are spicy and you don't want that. You want to keep them bell peppers and um, whatnot in the same area. Well, that's if you save the seeds, of course. If you don't save the seeds, it's not an issue um, if you want to grow it the following year. But I kind of want some consistency if I do, in, in case I do want to save the seeds. Here I've got some pots that are bigger, a lot bigger, and I'm going to transplant those peppers in here. And um, maybe have some flowers with them. They don't really disease up as much as tomato plants, so um, I may not put anything with them. So here are some of the pepper transplants, I'm trying to keep them warm still. So I'm covering it up slightly. Some of them are still a bit small to transplant, so I'll leave them in there for now. Here are some more transplants. Serrano peppers. So I'm going to put mild chilies with mild chilies in a grouping and um, sweet peppers in a separate grouping and hot peppers in a separate grouping so that way um, their spice levels don't mix. So my strawberry plants don't look too great. Um, this one's uh, newly transplanted in here because there was nothing growing in there. 
Uh, but some of these, I know they're going to get a revival. Um, but I think I'm going to have to stick some new soil in there and pot up some, plant some strawberry plants in some of these pockets. And I'll just have to go around and check for which ones have uh, plant or which ones are lacking. See some of them don't have too much soil so I'm gonna have to add soil. Some of them don't have soil. You can see that big gap right there so I'm gonna have to add soil in them. Now for the big reveal. So I have some pretty plants. Some are already starting to make fruit and flowers and I added soil in there pulled out all the dead leaves so hopefully it will look a lot nicer here's my other tower added some soil some of the holes didn't have plants so i added the plants in there some are a little bit low but i can't dig it out because i've got to take them out in layers in order to do so so I think we'll be okay for one more season. And if you don't know my trick, what I do is I use one of these lids from um, Cos Costco's um, chicken pot pie or pies. And I water the, the green stock and then I place this on top to prevent evaporation and to prevent the sun from hitting the top of this and decaying it and making it brittle. So I just have an extra layer of protection here. As far as seedlings go, I sowed some sweet pepper, very moist banana peppers. I sowed some sweet pepper, Quadrato di Asti Rosso. I sowed some sweet pepper, Chinese Giant. So all the sweet peppers are going to go in the front yard. Then on my side yard, I'm going to grow the mild peppers. So Tam Jalapeno. It's a milder jalapeno. Some, so in the backyard, it's going to be hot pepper, cascabella. I can't wait to taste how they all taste and, you know, try to figure out the difference between all their flavors. Hot pepper, Joe E. Parker. Hot pepper jalapeno gigantia. Hot pepper big Thai hybrid, which it's like a Thai pepper, but it's not as spicy. Then I sewed some hot pepper habanero. some hot pepper, Pasilla Bajo. So this one didn't seed, um, didn't grow when I put it in the pots, or it did, but it died because we had too much rain and it's kind of sat in this tub with water. Some Hungarian yellow wax. I managed to grow two black um, Hungarians. And then here is the hot pepper long thin cayenne. I had to reseed that one as well. It didn't pop up. And so we'll see of all of those which ones do grow.